Hello, fellow Unreal Engine developers. If you use any creative software, you know that keyboard shortcuts make you faster and more productive. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 areas in Unreal Engine 5 where beginners will find useful keyboard shortcuts. Let's get straight into it. in any level you're going to want to move around. So the first thing you need to know is by holding the right mouse button down, you can then move your mouse to look around in any direction. And while you're holding the right mouse button down, you can use the W, A, S and D keys to move. So W goes forward, S backwards, D to the right and A to the left. And also while holding your uh, right mouse button down, you can use the E and Q keys to move up and down. So E moves up and Q goes down. So now you've got all of your six axes of movement catered for. And the last thing I want to tell you here is that you can also use, while you're moving around, the middle mouse button in order to accelerate and decelerate your movement. So if I, as I move backward here, if I scroll my mouse wheel, I move quickly. It stays at the speed you last left it at. And then as I go forward, if I use the middle mouse, I can come to an almost a dead halt. So saves having to go up into this corner and change the camera speed. You can just keep moving around by using the middle mouse wheel. So let's move on to the next area. To find an actor in your scene, you can either just double click on the item in the outliner, like so, or if you've selected an item like this canoe here, I can press F on the keyboard to find or focus on that particular asset. Once you've found the item you want to manipulate, you've got three major tools at your disposal. The first one is move, and you get that action by pressing the W key. If you want to then rotate it, you can press the E key to bring up the rotation tool. And if you want to scale it, you press R on the keyboard and that brings up the scaling tool. As you get more used to using these tools, it's quicker to use the space bar to rotate between them. So you can go between the move, rotate and scale tool just by continuously hitting the space bar. If you want to duplicate an object, the quickest way to do that is to bring up the move tool and then simply hold down the alt key while moving and that will create a duplicate of the object. If you have an object selected and you want to bring it down to the ground level, just simply press the end key on the keyboard and that will bring it down to either the landscape or the nearest item directly below it. To create a new level, press Ctrl N on the keyboard and then choose the template you want. Once the level's created, to save it, press Control S, uh, give it a name. And then anytime you make any changes, you can press Control S to resave it. However, be aware that Control S doesn't save all the assets that may have changed since you've been working on them. So I would recommend you get used to using Control Shift S which is a way of saving the level and all unsaved assets. To change the main lighting in your scene, you can press Control L, which will bring up a widget like this, but make sure you keep the Control key pressed. Then you can move your mouse around. So if you move it left and right, it will rotate the sun around the sky and if you move it up and down, it will move it up and down in the sky. So you can keep moving while you've held that control key down. And then once you've got it in the position you want, then let go of the control key. To quickly go into play mode to test out your game, press Alt P on the keyboard. Then you can play your game and test your game. When you've finished and you want to come out of play mode, press the escape key to stop the game. And if you simply want to do a physics simulation test, let's say we want to check our floating yacht here, 
Rather than go into play mode, I can press Alt S to simulate and it will do the physics simulations without going into the full play mode. In Unreal Engine 5, the content is kept out of the way for the most part, so that it maximizes your screen space. But if you want to bring up the content drawer, press Control and Space, and it will pop up from the bottom of the screen. If you want to then remove it from the screen, press Control Space again to remove it. Uh, in order to find an item in the content browser, with it selected in the outline or on your level, just simply, so I've got the yacht here, just simply press Control B and it will browse and find that in your content structure. If you want to open up a blueprint that's selected, Control E will bring up the blueprint ready for editing here. While in the content browser, if you want to create a new folder at any level, select your folder and then Control Shift N will allow you to create a new folder and you can rename it immediately. With an object selected in your content browser, a quick way to make a copy of it is to press Control D for duplicate and again you can immediately rename it. If you want to rename any item in the content browser, just simply select it, press F2 and give it a new name. As you move around your level, you'll find compositions that you want to return to to check your scene. So if you find a view that you want to return to, press Control and one of the numbers above the QWERTY uh, keypad, so Control 1 in this case, and then I can move around somewhere else. If I then press the corresponding number 1, it will return to that viewport bookmark. If I want another one, I can go to a different space on the island, say here. Now I can press Control 2 for my second bookmark, and now I can toggle between one and two. And you have all the bookmarks available from one to zero, so 10 bookmarks available in total. To maximize the Unreal Engine editor on your screen, if you press Shift 11, you'll see the Windows toolbar will disappear, meaning that the Unreal Engine editor takes up the whole of your screen real estate. Uh, if you want to make the viewport full screen with it selected, if you press F11 to go in what they call immersive mode, it will bring it up to the maximum size, which is very useful if you want to test your game full screen. If you want to remove some of these widgets that you see in the editing mode, so as you're selecting things, you can press G and it will remove the uh, game elements from the screen and the gizmos. If you need them back, then press G again. So again, that's useful for going into immersive mode. So G toggles between showing the widgets and not showing the widgets here. If you want to remove the toolbar from the viewport, especially when you're in the full screen mode here, you can press Control Shift T and that removes the toolbar at the top of the screen. And if you want to get it back, Control Shift T brings it back as well. If you want to see the frame rate that your game is running at, press Control Shift H and it will bring up the frame rate in the top right of the screen. Very useful for a quick test of performance as you're going through adding things to your level. Sometimes it's useful to join things together so you can move and rotate them as a whole. Take this boardwalk, for example. At the moment, it's a collection of individual planks, but I'd like to move um, them all together as a boardwalk. So what I can do is I can select them all. So set the first one, go down to the last one and shift click it. You can also use control to join or, or to select individual items. Once you've got everything selected to group them together, press Control G and that will create a group. Now, when you select even an individual one, it will select the whole group. You can move them as a group. 
you can rotate them as a group. If you need to then go back to having them as individual elements, press Shift-G on the keyboard to ungroup them. And now you can go back to selecting individual planks. When you're creating your level, you often work in different modes by selecting modes in the top left here, such as landscape, foliage, modeling, painting. But rather than come up to here every time, get used to these shift and number combinations and they'll save you a bit of time as you create your level. So for example, if you want to go into the landscape mode, shift two will take you into landscape mode where you can sculpt and paint landscape uh, layers and textures. Shift three will take you into foliage mode for painting uh, leaves, grass and trees onto your landscape and various others uh, are available as well. If you want to come back to your regular mode, Shift one resets back to the standard uh, level editing mode. So I hope you found these keyboard shortcuts useful. Stay subscribed for more tutorials coming up. I'll probably do another keyboard shortcuts video soon for Blueprint users. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.